Do you want to learn how to put the fun and team bonding activities and to avoid the groans from your teams whenever you bring one of these up? Well, watch this team bonding video because I'm going to teach you some stuff that your team is going to want to play over and over again. Plus, stay tuned to the end of this video because I have some really cool productivity hacks for you too. Hi, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Adriana Girdler. I'm a business productivity specialist and a meeting facilitator pro. For more videos on how to excel your career, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button. These team bonding activities that I'm gonna share with you are gonna change your team's opinion on team bonding activities forever. Concentration. This team bonding activity actually is a really easy one, super fun, and it's something that everybody, no matter who's involved, actually really likes. So what you do is you get two teams and you break them up, you have them facing each other. And as you're facing each other, they're supposed to study what each other is wearing. One team turns around and is not to look while the other team switches things up. So what's really cool is you can go really fun by switching up shoes or switching up belts, but the whole purpose is the other team has to guess. Now, one thing I do because of timing, whenever you're in a meeting and you're trying to implement these bonding activities, is I usually say 10 things. So keep it to 10 that they have to guess. The other team, when they all line up and are ready, they turn around and they start to guess what it is the other team did. It's really cool because it shows about concentration, creativity. Um, are people paying attention? Ironically enough, most people aren't. Now, after the first team finally guesses it, the second team gets a turn at this too. I always find the second team tends to be a lot more creative because they've been through it once. It's a lot of fun. It's just a great way for people to kind of loosen up, stand up, really get engaged, and get to know each other because you start to see what people start to do. Some people like to be a lot of fun and make it easy, other people like to be like to be a little bit tricky just to see are you truly paying attention this is a fun one three truths and one lie this is a real fun one I actually use it in the beginning of my meetings when I'm introducing or when people are introducing themselves to a group you need to have at least three people in order to do this well and what you do is you ask people introduce yourself and tell the group three truths about yourself and one lie and they just go around the room and as people are saying it everyone tries to guess what the lie is it's a lot of fun here is an example. Hi, my name is Adriana Girdler. I have a dog. This is my first YouTube video. I'm a runner and I've been married for over 25 years. Let me know in the comment below, what's my lie? If you knew this about me, this one is a great one to really get a really cool understanding of your team members and instructions are very simple. Everyone has five minutes to talk about themselves on this statement. If you knew this about me, you would better understand who I am as a member of this team. Okay, here are the rules around this one, which is really important. It is a monologue. So you are supposed to talk for a full five minutes. However, if you choose not to talk for a full five minutes, then you can sit down, that person can sit down, and you're supposed to use up the remainder of the five minutes in silence. The other point too is because it's a monologue, no questions or comments are meant to be asked. And once the person is done speaking for five minutes, they then go to the next person, so on and so forth. So you gotta remember, what is it that you wanna share? So think of it this way. You don't wanna be sharing your resume, which is on one end of the spectrum, nor do you wanna be going to someone's deepest, darkest secrets either. It's in the middle. So you wanna share something that people really don't know about you. Probably, you know, you may feel slightly uncomfortable in telling it. That's probably the sweet spot that you wanna have because you're really showing your vulnerability and the whole point here is a bonding of a team. So do something like that that you're comfortable with that people know. Again, don't do the resume, don't do the deepest, darkest secret, but some something in between. So let me give you an example. If you knew this about me, you would have a better understanding who I am and how I contribute to this team. Now, when I was younger, not that you could tell, which is kind of ironic, um, I was a stutterer. In fact, still to this day, I'm a stutterer and it started in grade four. So I couldn't even get out a first sentence. So uh, letters that really caught me were M's and I's. So I literally was like, uh, uh, uh. It was very difficult. Um, 
it really was monumental for me because I was a student who always did well, hand was up, and then all of a sudden in grade four, I stuttered profusely. Um, very, so, so much so they actually brought me to a speech pathologist uh, for the school and I was doing that, which was helpful. But I find even to this day, whenever I get really nervous, I stutter. And what happens a lot of times is I gotta switch words in my head. So in conversations, when I have with people, if you find all of a sudden I'm talking to you and then all of a sudden, just there's this quick pause and maybe direction changes slightly or a word like it maybe doesn't make 100% sense to you. It's because I'm switching up a word because I know I'm going to stutter and I'm going to fall on that word still to this day. Um, but interesting enough, what I did do, which I think is really important as well, is I did not let it own me. Um, I was really big on, which is a big part of who I am, um, a, big, 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 a big part of who I am about discipline. Um, and not letting things own you. So I actually did speech pathology, and when I was in university, I joined the debating team, which was really out of my comfort zone because I had to debate impromptu style, and that was tremendously helpful for why I can do what I do today. Ironically, I do keynotes, and I love it. I'm actually shining when I speak to people, and I've got and mastered the stuttering, even though it will always be with me. Now that was an example of sharing my story. Um, it wasn't for a full five minutes. If I was in this uh, team bonding activity, I probably would have gone on for the full five minutes. Um, but if I didn't, and that's all I wanted to share because that's what I was comfortable with, I would sit down and the rest would be remaining in silence. Really honoring that person, this time is completely theirs and they could do whatever they want with it. And it's also a really nice way for other people to soak things in if there is a period of silence. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of silence or speak away, it's all good. But again, this is an example of what you could do. Now that you have your team bonding activities that are not going to create any groans, but people are going to want to do over and over again, it is time for you to go to the link below and grab this, some productivity hacks that you can give to your team that is going to help them knock productivity out of the park. Please subscribe to my channel, like the video, and share it with all the professionals and friends that you know. On that note, what's your favorite team bonding activity? Please share it with me in the comments below. I love to hear from you. Until then, have a great day. See you at the next video.